Well, I sent a letter to Santa Claus and told him that I wanted one of these. Okay? It's a DeWalt 788 scroll saw with a stand and a light. Never used one before. I had an old uh, uh, Montgomery Ward jigsaw at one time, and it's pretty much just a piece of junk. Didn't wasn't able to really do much with it, but had a little practice with it. So got it unpacked, got it put together, did a little practice cutting, trying to figure out how to how it works got the surface plate and it comes with the cast iron uh, surface plate got it uh, waxed and uh, I think I'm ready to uh, give it a try and see just exactly if I can run it or not don't know Looks to me like it's going to be a whole new skill set to have to gain. So hang with me and I'll let you watch as I learn. I need to make up some pattern stock that I can uh, practice on. So I took some... Uh, para wood, it's also called rubber wood, and uh, planed it down uh, fairly thin on the planer, and uh, I'm going to take a pattern and affix it to the front. The adhesive that I'm using is uh, a Krylon Easy Tack. It's a removable, and uh, repositionable adhesive. It's for crafts and things like that. I found that if I put it on the pattern itself that uh, it will it can be removed without leaving any residue whatsoever on the wood. So I'll spray the back of that up, let it tack up, and then uh, I'll put it on uh, that wood that I have and uh, that'll give me something that I can uh, practice on. I'm going to make two sets of the same uh, lettering, and uh, I'll practice on uh, one set of it. And uh, if I am able to figure this saw out by then, I'll uh, cut the second one up and uh, use it on the project that I'm working on. I decided to cut these out on the bandsaw for a couple reasons. The obvious one is that it was already set up, ready to go. All I had to do was turn it on. Another one was, I'm pretty familiar with it. But I wanted to do it when I could take a few seconds and just get the feel for how that bandsaw blade cuts. It's a quarter inch bandsaw blade. And uh, compare that against what I was gonna find when I went over to cut them on the new scroll saw. Going to affix double-sided tape to the back of these. This lettering is going to be attached onto a project that has a contrasting finish uh, with these letters. And so I'm going to use the double-sided tape as a means of affixing it rather than trying to use a wood glue. And in order for me to be able to cut these out, I need to have some penetration holes through the letters. And I'll show you a picture of the comparison to that drill bit that I'm using there with the blade 
that I'm going to be using. I've done quite a bit of cutting out using different tools over the years, coping saws, jigsaws. As I said uh, earlier, I have had a, a uh, uh, benchtop jigsaw at one point, but uh, this was a little tough to get onto. As you can see there, I'm kind of fumbling around trying to figure which way to turn it and, and uh, uh, had a couple problems that I, I, I didn't work out on this piece. It took me another piece before I really figured it out. But uh, see how small that blade is? Normally when you're cutting with a, uh, a bandsaw or even uh, a normal jigsaw, is you can see that that blade uh, is flat on the sides. And you use that kind of as a guide and your eye, for the most part, follows along the edge of that saw. Well, it's so small I can't see it. And with it moving, it's just a blur. Uh, the other thing I found was that I wasn't lined up directly behind the blade. I was lined off up off to the side. And so when I thought I was uh, turning it, I was actually more or less pulling it. And uh, that's one thing that uh, you can get away with on a wider blade, but on these narrower ones, it just don't work. I went ahead and uh, made an adjustment or two and, and tried another piece. And uh, I found out that uh, I needed to make some uh, changes to my work area. So what I did is I moved the saw into an area in the other side of the shop that had better light. I uh, couldn't see that blade. I just could not see where it was cutting. So I found my magnifying uh, glasses and put those on and got my chair adjusted to exactly the right height, got it exactly in line with that blade, and uh, I decided to go ahead and uh, give a final one more time, a final shot, and make a note cutting out those letters. The more I cut these patterns out, the more I realized that I really kind of made a mistake with the pattern. You see, the uh, background of the pattern is black. So is the blade. I can't see the blade if it happens to wander off into the background material. So what I really should do is I should have really thin lines, perhaps uh, no thicker than the blade itself, and use those as the outline for the pattern. Uh, I'm going to try that next time. I think it might make it just a little easier.
So my thinking is that I have some uh, brass metallic paint. I'm going to try to put enough on here to give them a brass tint without hiding the grain in the wood. See how this works out. We may be starting over. It almost works. I'll let that dry and uh, then give it another shot. Once this is finished, I'll uh, coat it over with a coat of uh, polyurethane. That'll give it uh, a little more depth and make it look like it uh, is more of a plating and less of a coating. I hope. We'll see how it comes out. I got these cut out, got this done, and uh, here's a little preview of the project these are being used on. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have nothing less than a wonderful day.